everyone, Graham from Loudwire here with the legends themselves, Lamb of God. How are you guys doing today? Lovely. Legends. Legends. That means we're old. Well, I mean, you're old, we but you're legends also. <laughs> Good to see you, man. It's, it's very nice to see you guys. Uh, Randy, you asked me not to ask any stupid questions. No, I, did, I didn't ask you not to ask any stupid questions. I said if you... I said if you, presumption. yeah, I said you're you're in the middle. So if you ask stupid questions, and we can just stare at you. We know this guy. He's great. He's yeah. super pro. Uh, that's you're too kind. But I, I would like to start with a stupid question, and that stupid question is, uh, when's the last time you guys visited uh, Willie's shitty pants in the woods? Oh goodness! <laughs> Here they are. The shitty pants. Willie's poopy pants. <laughs> hey, Willie! Last time we made that movie, I guess. Yeah, I've never visited those. You've never uh, seen them? Uh, on oh, film. he saw them. I, might have, I don't even remember if I saw, I, I saw them in person. Yeah, that's a stupid question. Yeah. I told you it was a stupid yeah. question. You were right. <laughs> yeah, correct. Guys, 10th album is coming. Omens is the new record. Of course, we're all excited for it. Uh, I, I really want to know, you know, 10 albums into a career, uh, how would you compare making your 10th album versus making your first album what are the big differences there budget <laughs> yeah i mean at time and resources being one of the obvious like um luxuries that we have far more of now uh interestingly we made this newest record probably more like we made those older records than we have in a very long time in the sense that uh we recorded you know the the cornerstone the bones of each song were recorded all together in fact um and you know it's not a live right we didn't record it live but we did record the basics live on the floor and interestingly as well uh, I, more than half of the vocal takes that you hear on the album are from randy's live takes when he was jamming with us on the floor um just because it worked out that way. There was this, a particular kind of energy and an excitement and a pulse and a life in those takes um, that Randy, you know, got being more in the element with the rest of us. I'm talking about stuff that involves him. He can tell you about it. But yeah, so I think in that sense, it was very much like we used to do because things were done more uh, together, more simultaneous. Yeah, that's a 100% correct assessment of the situation. Like, I don't like recording at all. Um, but I especially don't like just singing to tape or as it were a digital file now, but when I'm can actually see these guys, there's just something that happens when we're together that doesn't happen when it's press play on a computer, yeah. you know, look at me, here's, yeah. where, here's where they stop the camera and they put some dreamy music while yeah. they look at each other. Yeah. How many books did you read during the pandemic? Uh, that's an unanswerable question. A lot. Yeah, very much so. A lot. Uh, any good ones? I've you already recommend? read five books on this tour, and we've only been out for two weeks. Jeez. Any uh, any ones that stick out for you? Tons of them. I mean, uh, I I liked uh, Cal Newport's Digital Minimalism. Um, right now, I'm reading uh, Chrissy Hines, bio her her autobiography, mm. uh, which is. I'm not the biggest Pretenders fan, no, no insult to them, but yeah. she's a magnificent writer and it, it's about, you know, she was at Kent State when the, when the kids got shot. She was there, so wow. I just read that section last night. It's very interesting. She's a great writer. How did you keep your mind occupied during the, the dark months? Uh, you're not going to ask me about books? Do you, are, you a, are you a big book nerd not like Randy? Not particularly. I read, I read a couple of books. I'm just giving you shit. That's okay. Um, how did I keep my... I did what I always do, man. I, I made music. I made a lot of music. I wrote a lot of music for Lamb. I wrote music for other people. Um, I wrote music for myself. I just write music, play guitar. Uh, I got a big, big field with a big garden in it. Got some chickens, got a dog, got a couple kids. Yeah. That's enough. Homesteading life. Yeah, it's not bad at all. I love. I went out there and uh, every now and then would plant a sweet potato, and then he they did. would grow. I some sweet potatoes and up I, in my field. I never got them. So. I got them. <laughs> I got them. I just yeah. didn't chase. I just didn't run into the city and chase yeah. you down with a bag of sweet potatoes. I was gonna say I love uh, I love your Twitter because you're always uh, you're always talking about things that you're grateful for. Sundays. Uh, yeah. Gratitude Sundays. Yep. Yeah, I think that's a cool way to. You know, everyone uses Twitter for uh, evil. 
yeah. and stuff like that. It's cool to see some positivity out there, like, and not fake positivity. No either. one's ever used Twitter for evil. What? I don't know if I agree with that. Well, I mean, a lot about it. I think, you know, with regards to the Twitter thing, I realized somewhere along the way that Twitter is a cesspool, and I'm pretty active on that platform. And so I thought maybe if I do something one day a week that's positivity, I'll be doing something to counterbalance my negative footprint, uh, my negative social media footprint. And it's caught on, you know, people seem to respond to it. And honestly, like the gratitude, it's something I do on my own anyway, it really is. It's like uh, I've made some, some pretty, you know, uh, significant lifestyle changes a number of years ago. And finding gratitude is uh, a part of that whole process yeah. for me, yeah. You did some very cool stuff in Ecuador recently, uh, uh -huh. doing some land conservation and stuff. Can you tell me about how that started? Uh, I believe it was with surfing down there, right? Yeah. I, I surf every chance I get, and um, I had a house on Oak Island, North Carolina to write my last book, um, and I, I started surfing down there, and then one day one of my local buddies is like, have you met the Ecuadorian dude? And I'm like, a dude from Ecuador on Oak Island? Because it's this little redneck island in the middle of nowhere. And I met this dude, Carlos, and he was like, well, if you like these waves, you should come surf in Ecuador with me. So I just said, cool. And I went there and became friends with him, his family, a bunch of locals down there. And uh, eventually, uh, he he was already conserving. Him and his family were already doing some reforesting, conserving land, uh, doing some permaculture, agriculture stuff. So I, at the beginning of the pandemic, I um, I became aware of a, a significant chunk of land that was for sale, and um, and. Uh, bought some and I thought okay well I'll just go on tour and make this money back because it was a fairly significant chunk of change and then we didn't go on tour for two years nobody did so I was like well shit Joke's how, on you. yeah how, how, how am I gonna pay for this shit because there's additional costs so cameo had been after me for a while to do it uh, punk rock guilt kind of prevented me from doing that and then I was like wait I could do it and then use it to fund this and so um so far that's worked out man really well i'm getting ready to get another seven hectares i think um paid for by cameo uh and me and my buddy carlos were just interviewed by the weather channel in atlanta recently that's awesome yeah it's pretty they were cool. talking to you about that stuff yeah that's they didn't talk to us about lamb of god they, no they, wow to talk to Ran, i gotta say randy was really excited to be on the Weather Channel. Very excited. He was really excited about that. And Jamie Josta hit me up and he's like, dude, I, so many people are hitting me up because you're on the Weather Channel and they have deep respect for you now. And he, he sent me uh, a video of him with Kirk from Crowbar. And Crow was like, yeah, bro, I love it that you're on the Weather Channel. I watch it all the time. Now you, you're big time Randy now. He texted me, I'm going to be on the Weather Channel. <laughs> I'm going to be on the Weather Channel, yeah. You don't get a lot of those moments anymore. So no. I'm very happy for you. No. Weather Channel, it's a, it's a big deal. It's a big deal. And, and the Weather Channel Shout is out neutral. Weather Channel. Yeah. Nobody, like, there's no, like, politics in the Weather Channel. It's yeah. just the weather, you it's know? Weather. Everybody loves it. Give it time. <laughs> Surely we can all politicize the Weather Channel. <laughs> I've heard some weather conspiracies, yeah, but we don't yeah, need to, yeah. we don't need to no, get into those. Uh, are you still taking photos everywhere you go? Uh, on this tour, I've done some shooting. I normally do, yes, but I'm trying to remain disciplined because I'm. Uh, wow. I have a, uh, a a deadline for my new book, so I've been trying to to get that wow. done. And as you can see and tell right here, this isn't the best place to write a book. So, um, you know, I've been trying to force myself to do some in the back lounge, and um, Mr. Morton's been known to scribble every now and then too. Really. Are you writing stuff? Uh, you know, messing around, yeah. Messing around. Really? Come on. I mean, I've written okay. lyrics for the band for a year. I know that, but like, is there a book? Is there, uh, are you typing some words I don't know what document? he's doing. I just know that sometimes he's writing. He could yeah. be plotting my demise for all I know. Gratitude lists. <laughs> yes, exactly. So both of you guys have like done cameo, not that cameo, cameos with other bands, other musicians. Uh, you've done your own solo stuff that was very, very good. Uh, do you have any other alternative projects to Lamb of God that you're working on right now? Well, 
sure. Yeah, I mean, I, I always, you know, am writing music. Uh, I'm always writing. I, I don't necessarily block out time to write. To, to, usually I pick up a guitar and something will come up. And if, if I think it's cool, I'll either remember it or grab my phone and record the riff or whatever. I scribble lyrics, ideas down. So I really don't ever stop writing. And uh, obviously I write for Lamb of God and obviously I write solo stuff. And I, I, I write for other bands sometimes publicly, sometimes behind the scenes and cool. we don't talk about it. And so all those things happen. Yeah, right. still happen. What's your, what's your new book about? You. It's not gonna be a bestseller, man. <laughs> I don't think that's a smart idea. Uh, basically, uh, it's uh, my last book. The theme of the last book was personal accountability. And the theme of the new book, uh, broadly, is perspective. And it's about me trying to learn from other people's experiences and perspectives so that I don't have to be a dummy and continually make my own mistakes over and over and over again. Just kind of look at the way people, oh, he's doing something I like and he's doing it correctly, okay. you know, and try and learn from that. Um, I think people are a bit myopic these days and I'm trying not to be. Okay. Do we know uh, a potential date? Are you still, or is it something no, you're still writing I, right no, now? No, we don't, no. Oh. I, I know I got an extension, but okay. I'm pushing against so that the, because I'm on tour with this band. You're a deadline right now pretty much? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. But I will say, uh, Dark Days, I think, I'll say that every time I interview, I've said it before, best best book from a musician about their life that I've read. Thank you. Straight up. Like, Thank you. I hope you enjoy the new one if I ever get it finished.